What's up guys, this is Technocube and you are watching Mobile Computing Fundamentals. So today, today's session is, it is based on something called as different propagation, different propagation modes. So the topic is different propagation modes. So I have this new platform to make you explain certain things. But I'm a little bit slow on this, but I'll I'll make some, you know, um, I mean, exemplary videos to understand it. But right now, just for the sake of, you know, this session, please bear with me. So this is different propagation mode. So in general, I have something called as unguided media. And I have guided media. So these are the two, uh, you know, the two propagation mode. So in general, your guided media is uh, is known as your guided media is known as wired connection okay so this is your wired connection whereas in the unguided it is known as wireless connection okay so this is wireless and this is wired connection okay <clears throat> okay now if i generalize here unguided connection then i have uh, different other things such as here unguided media is being uh, distinguished as ground wave so ground wave is the you know a transmission media and unguided media then another one is sky wave this is sky wave and another one is something called as line of sight so this is line of sight we precisely known with the term LOS. Then we have a non line of sight. You see, this is non line of sight. We precisely mean by that is it is NLOS. Okay. Now, if I generalize here guided media, then guided media is basically a wireless connection. Then I'll change the color again, make red, and then in the guided media. I have so many things such as I'll go with twisted pair cable. So this is my twisted pair cable. Then I go with coaxial cable. Coaxial cable. Let me call the eraser coaxial cable. And then again I have something called as fiber optic cable. So you can see these are three of the uh, wired connection medium. Okay, you understand it. So let's understand first. So let's understand first the unguided media <clears throat> and different, you know, different uh, propagations mode of that. So I'll create a new file here. <clears throat> and inside that, we will understand the unguided media. So you see unguided is nothing but your wireless connection which I told you. <coughs> so now here uh, the wireless connection is basically consist of electromagnetic wave right. So electromagnetic wave transport it transport electromagnetic wave transport without any without any physical conductor or medium from from one end to another it looks different but that's i think it is understand understandable my writing it looks different but i hope just for the sake of this first session you bear with me right so thank you so much for that okay so hand guided media and then electromagnetic waves inside you know wireless connections then it transport without any physical conductor so we don't have any physical conductor here to transmit from one end to another end it is completely air based or wireless based right <clears throat> and which is known as it is known as your wireless connection so we call this type of thing as wireless communication. That's it. Now you see in electromagnetic spectrum, 
in your electromagnetic in your electromagnetic spectrum we 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 had allocated or someone had given us 3 hertz to 900 sorry not 3 3 hertz it is basically 3 kilohertz it is 3 kilohertz to 9 terahertz this is the frequency range that we had given for wireless communication and we can take any of it <coughs> okay so how you can understand is basically I have an electromagnetic spectrum here which we had given um, um, so from this electromagnetic spectrum we actually take here this is our radio band and microwave band so we take frequencies or bands from this location this is my this is my radio band or microwave band you can take any of it so here in this side we have we have you know low frequency you see understand this is low frequency but here in this side we have different other frequencies such as alpha such as beta such as gamma such as and these these are some of the high frequencies now the question arises that even if we have low frequency then why are we using this band why do we need it and they have high frequency and why why are not, why are we not using this the first reason is that alpha beta gamma are harmful for you know for the human body it is having a radiation problem so that's why we are not using it the first thing is and the second thing is you see if you go with the left hand side we have a larger wavelength we have larger lambda so for a distant communication i need larger wavelength not the shorter wavelength and here there is a shorter wavelength so i don't need shorter wavelength i need larger wavelength right because we are doing distant communication that's why we are taking the radio bands and my microwave bands okay <clears throat> so now let's understand that what exactly is the ground wave propagation so let me again put it down here and let me take let me take purple and here so now i will make you understand that what is ground wave propagation okay so what happened in ground wave propagation actually so uh, let's say i have here this is my this is going to be my earth so this is my earth <clears throat> and this is my antenna which is or you can say this is my access point this tower is actually <clears throat> is actually settled at some rough surface of this earth planet okay it, it, it looks like right now it is top on the earth but it it means that it is right now on the surface of the earth okay somewhere in the in the location of earth okay so now when this transmitter transmit the signals the signals go in this way okay so it radiates anywhere in the location it radiates everywhere but keep that in mind it radiates always on the comparison or always on the curvature of the earth so whatever the curvature of the earth is it follows that curvature okay so here the signals i will precisely write down write down over here that radio wave here radio wave travel radio wave travel through the lowest portion it is it travels at the lowest portion of the atmosphere so they are very near to the ground surface or the surface of the earth rather than to be on the atmosphere so it is the lowest portion of the atmosphere i need, need to change the you know the the settings of this pen because i am not writing in a good level that's okay now next thing is inside the ground propagation it says that uh, we have very low frequencies keep that in mind we are using below below 2 megahertz we are using the frequency range of below 2 megahertz which is which is precisely very very low so that's why we have low frequencies uh, these signals are 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 what do you call this 
scattered i'll write scattered here low frequency signal scattered in all direction in all direction from from your transmitter that is tx this is your transmitter and transmitter antenna but or i can say and follow and it follow the curvature of the earth so it follows the curvature of the earth so this is the thing next thing is now next thing is if you want to make you know this if you want to make a good signal stand if you want to elongate it, this you know frequency range then what how can you do that is if you increase the transmitter power if you increase the transmitter power then you have what good signal strength so this is good signal strength what i mean to say is if you increase uh, the power of the transmitter antenna here the power then you must or then the transmitter antenna is having some good signal strength that you can pass on to the receiver side so this is your ground wave propagation now let's understand the sky wave propagation so i'll precisely write down over here that this is sky wave propagation now inside the sky wave propagation we use generally the higher frequencies first of all we use very high frequencies up to the range of 2 to 30 megahertz so this is this is some high frequencies so what happened in sky wave propagation so again i have this earth surface and then i have here first antenna this is my transmitter one and this is my transmitter two what happened here or oh, let me just erase this and make an, a room for a good diagrammatical view so i will create here the the earth and this part this part is known as your ionosphere or atmosphere whatever you want to call but this is ionosphere and this is your earth your first transmitter antenna is here and the second transmitter antenna is here so this is your rx and let me precisely call this antenna as your tx that is your transmitter okay so what happened when this transmitter wants to send some signal it will not send directly to the receiver but instead it will send to the ionosphere and from there it radiates towards the receiver antenna and why do we do that is because ionosphere contains ions which are chargeable and from there you know it gives some good signal strand and come back to the receiver with a very good signal strand okay that's why we are using high frequency range so that it reach to the ionosphere and then come back to the receiver side so this is your sky wave propagation okay and all kind of you know dth connection direct to home services right now that uses the same thing okay so this is your dth connections okay direct to home now let's understand the other one and other one is a line of sight connection so i will write here that we will we are understanding line of sight connection and this is precisely we call it as los where what happen actually at the earth surface this is my earth surface so I have one antenna here. You had seen many a times this. We have second antenna here. So when the transmitter TX wants to send some signal to the RX, that is your receiver, it directly sends to the receiver. Okay. There is no obstruction in between here in TX and RX in between. There is no obstruction at all. So it can directly send this signal to the receiver side. And that's why we need to use some good and very high frequencies. It is above 30 megahertz, which is quite a high range of frequency. We have to use 30 megahertz of antenna. Here, the other thing is it can it can you know the, the transmit it transmit the signal, transmit signal in straight line. Straight line to Rx from tx next thing it is that antennas are directional so you can see here the antennas are completely antennas are directional facing each other 
So the antennas are bidirectional here. You can see this is bidirectional, and the antennas are facing each other. You can see here this antenna is facing the this RX antenna. You know, and that's why we have you know good signal strength here. We have about 30 megahertz which is good at higher frequencies and that's why we have good frequencies another factor here in line of sight is the height of antenna which is very important part here height of antenna so if you have a higher antenna what will happen if you have the surface of earth and if you have a very big antenna what will happen so it will go straight but at some position of time you know it follow the curvature of earth it follows the curvature of the earth because gravitational force and uh, certain things affect here so it'll, the it will follow the curvature of the earth and then this line of sight will become ground wave propagation so we don't have to do that right so please keep that in mind that if you are working with line of sight then the height is a factor you provide your antenna height in a suitable range so that it provides a good line of sight connection otherwise there would be a problem so uh, this is your line of sight connection okay now let's understand now let's understand something called as a uh, non line of sight connection right so let me uh, let me uh, change the color here and let me take a uh, green color to understand to make you understand something called as non line of sight green color is good right it soothes our eyes so this is non line of sight i have a very <laughs> i don't have good handwriting on this screen but i'm i'm practicing okay i'll, I'll do it uh, so this is non line of sight connection so uh, what exactly happens in the non line of sight connection is basically so you are having one one surface of the earth so this is my earth surface what happened i have an antenna here I have an antenna here and again the antenna here on this side I have the second antenna here I call this antenna as my RX that is your receiver antenna and here on this side I have a transmitter antenna so I have a TX connection okay so TX and RX now this is transmitter and receiver now what happened here line of sight connection doesn't have anything in between TX and RX they are very directional and they don't have anything in between right so this is line of sight they are working in a very linear way so they are connecting like point to point whereas in the non line of sight there is something in between tx and rx and it can be anything so let me say i have some mountains here i have some buildings here you know i have some buildings i have some tree here uh, maybe i have some river here i have clouds here and stuff like that so what happened in this scenario your signal is like now it is it is linear but we have this problem here the mountains and other thing so when this signal gets heated or heated to this mountain your signal is reflected or scattered or diffracted or refracted these are the four terms here scattering we have a reflection we have a refraction and we have a diffraction or dispersion okay these are the four factors on which the signal is dependent so now because of this reason this is the point where it heats and then we have the scattered reflect and refraction happens so now you see this signal gets some extra time why it have to you know it, it is actually you know hitting on this mountain and then he will take some extra time or extra distance to reach it to this receiver side because it is not only the mountains it is then again it will hit hit by this building hit by this uh, this tree hit by this uh, cloud and certain other things so it will it will take some extra distance here you see here this is the point it is taking the extra distance here for traveling to the receiver side so now you see in the line of sight if i have a t t means the signal that is sent from the transmitter to the receiver we, that is taking t the total time let's say it is the 10 microsecond the normal time whereas in the non line of sight you see it is as it is covering some extra distance 
you see distance depends on your speed and time so that means now instead of only t i have some extra t and that is known as delta t and this delta t is nothing but your delay in the signal you with me you definitely with me why is that so is because we are covering some extra distance to cope up with scattering scattering reflecting refracting and dispersion or diffraction because of that reason to make it again soothing at the receiver side we have to cover the extra distance and because of this extra distance we have extra time and this extra time is nothing but delay in the signal so now instead of 10 microsecond which is there in the line of sight now your total time it is double of that or double or triple you take any of it so it is 100 microsecond now because of this extra delay so this is the problem in the non line of sight connection and this is the actual scenario in your wireless communication as there is no place in between you know there is as the, there is no place where you can have this scenario that there is nothing in between transmitter and receiver it is going to be happen if you are working with commercialization network right if you are working with some high communications like WiMAX and other stuff then there would be a you know communication which uh, takes the line of sight there is no nothing in between transmitter and receiver but you are using any commercialization network then there must be something like building like trees like different other antennas anything like that so that would be a problem in non line of sight uh, communication so this is you know this is your nlos and which we had covered and we had seen unguided media completely okay so we had seen ground wave sky wave we have seen uh, line of sight communication and then non-line of sight communication i hope you understand it thank you so much for listening to me if you have any doubt if you have any question you can meet me in the comment section i will definitely feedback you within no time Thank you so much for listening to me and if you haven't subscribed my channel, I again insist you to please subscribe it. Thank you so much.